geez, that can't be good. What? Oh God, what about this picture? Uh, what? This plays like a VHS tape. Oh God, what happens if I've broken the needle? No! <laughs> CEDs are amazing. They're also cheap. Now, again, what is a CED made out of? It's vinyl. What's also made out of vinyl? Records. Yes, CEDs are quite simply records. They even play with a cartridge. Now, this wasn't the only analog medium that you had back in 1981. Actually, that would also apply in 1982, 1983, and 1984 when the laser disc, when uh, CED was released. Laserdisc was also on the market, and that was actually read by lasers, and they looked a lot cooler, and they were great for scaring away animals in your garden. The one advantage CED did have was that it was crazy cheap. Now, unlike with the Laserdisc here, it would cost a small fortune, and probably it was going to be cheaper if you brought the entire cast and crew and the director to your living room and played out the entire movie right there. Yes, that's true. For Raiders of the Lost Ark on Laserdisc, you'd be probably looking at about $45, $50, maybe even $60 if you were very unlucky. Probably even more. That wasn't the case with CED. On CED, you could get the exact same movie for only $15. And that's because, again, it's a vinyl record, plain audio and video. And the same methods that were used to cut every other record out there could have, was like, could have been and was applied to CED. But that came with a couple of downsides. The groove density inside of a, laser, of a CED, my bad again, is much denser than that of an LP. Very dense. That's why you never actually see the inside of a CED. It also makes them very fragile, and there's one particular thing to remember when you store your CED cartridge. Now let's take that same CED cartridge and let's open it up to f figure out what exactly is going on inside of it. To do so, we need to bypass the safety interlocks. It isn't recommended you do this to a functioning CED cartridge. Any additional dust or handling can cause additional damage and wear to your stylus cartridge, as well as damage to the very fragile disc itself. As you can see, the disc is very, very shiny. And yes, it is a record. There's a very, 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 very fine groove track going all the way around. And it should be nice and clean. There should be no imperfections on this at all. But as we saw, it was skipping quite badly. So there was damage to the disc somewhere. And you can actually see it right here. Let's take a closer look at those imperfections. Because of the design of CED players and the cartridge medium themselves, it's very unlikely that you'll have the stylus head manage to crash onto it and cause some sort of strange condition like that. But here we have two very um, common is issues that you will find with a CED cartridge. The first one here you see is an arc pattern which occurs in the same spot. This indicates that the, that the entire cartridge has been allowed to warp. It may have been exposed to sunlight like any other record in a high temperature environment. In a situation like a CED cartridge, you cannot really repair this warp. Maybe through time or just laying it flat for long periods might restore it. But other than that, once you see this damage, it is here for good. And more than often, this is your time to say this disc is now garbage. The other one here, as you see, is a scratch pattern, which is all over the place. This is more indicative of very poor storage. The reason for poor storage in a situation like this is that CEDs are ridiculously uh, sensitive to how they are stored. Never store CEDs flat in a stacked fashion. Always store CED cartridges on their sides. Failure to do so will cause any movement within the discs to have their upper and lower caddy cases rub up against the discs and scratch them as we see right here. It's also worth mentioning at this here that if you see this kind of damage as well, again, the disc is rendered 
um, well, very poor quality. I would consider it throwing it out at this point or making a beautiful little display piece as there's no way you can restore this back to its original quality. Now here is a CED that is in much better condition and not simply because it's a Star Trek movie that's never been played. This one has been played a number of times in a store. Again, we bypass the interlock and we can slide it out. And like mentioned before, this disc here is in absolutely pristine condition. Maybe a little bit of dirt right there. Other than that, there's no signs of scratches on anywhere on the disc surface. You can almost see the groove density in there. It's still very, very fine. But this disc here, when put into a CED player, will play absolutely fine. To give you an idea of the dimensions we're talking about, here's a groove mock-up 10,000 times actual size. These are the undulations of the signal the cutter is vibrating 3 million times a second to produce. The player's stylus rides in the groove and reads the signal as it passes over the peaks and valleys. In contrast to this, which recreates 10 video disc grooves, one groove in an audio record would be about, well, the length of this entire table. Now, of course, skipping could also be the result of dust that's built up inside of your CED cartridge. Generally put, there is no recommended cleaning method used to get any of that dust out of it besides just playing the cartridge at least once or twice. I've had a number of movies which came to me completely unplayable and skipping, but after the third play playthrough, it was no problem at all. The last and final thing you might want to look into is maybe that your stylus cartridge itself is worn out. Oh, one other thing. When it comes to the specialized lubricant that is applied to every CED cartridge at the factory, I wouldn't worry about it breaking down or gumming up or it causing any problems on its own. The CED itself will wear out long before the life expectancy of the silicone based lubricant ever fails. But back to what I was saying, in the event that you suspect that maybe it's your cartridge that's worn out, thus causing excessive skipping and frame jumping and so forth, I do recommend you look into a rebuild service more than going onto eBay and testing your luck with one of their expensive cartridges. I had my own cartridge here rebuilt by a service called CE Datum and you can find them online at cdatum.com. He offers a pretty good price when it comes to in inspection and repairs. As a matter of fact, I had my own cartridge inspected and tested for absolutely no cost at all. The repair itself was also a very good price, $40. I couldn't find a single cartridge on eBay which proved itself to be a refurbished or brand new cartridge in that kind of price range. It's, much, it's very much recommended by me that you look into him and seeing if he could rebuild your cartridge too at a very reasonable price. That's all for today. Thank you for watching this video.